I want to welcome you into the top 10 heat printing mistakes webinar. Uh, and we're essentially going to talk about the mistakes and how you could fix them, correct them, or completely avoid them, right? Uh, having proper application and reducing all of those frustrations helps anybody in business, specifically apparel decorators. When uh, we look to run effective businesses, we're looking for consistent, predictable, and repeatable results every single time with every single order. It just makes everything run smoother through the shop and without hitting those snags or having to stop and troubleshoot uh, you know, you could move a lot quicker and smoother through just your daily processes. I know when I run into a scenario and I've been decorating for uh, about 15 years now and I've ran into tons of issues. So some of these are very, very near and dear to my heart because they're mistakes that I've made in the past that if I could help you avoid those mistakes, it's going to send you, save you tons of time, frustration, energy and uh, hair if you have a tendency to pull out your hair when you get frustrated because I know I do, right? It just is absolutely just disruptive to the entire day. So we're going to talk about the top 10 heat printing mistakes that we've seen out in the industry, the mistakes that we've made here today. Um, of course, my name is Dave with Stalls and Transfer Express. Uh, I've been decorating, like I said, for about 15 years, learned how to screen print on my kitchen table, uh, worked through several different commercial screen printing shops uh, over the past maybe 10 years uh, until I've been finally here at Stalls for coming up on ooh, five years. I think I've been, uh, I've been here with Stalls and Transfer Express. And I am happy to be a resource for you and your business. Uh, everything we do here at Stalls and Transfer Express is dedicated to your brand or business's success. So uh, use that chat feature over on the side. And that's really the beauty of these interactive webinars is that you get to ask questions. Uh, I may stay very focused on our, our presentation and the things that I have to show you today. We're going to jump in uh, and show you some art tips. Uh, we're going to show you some mocking up. We're going to, I have a heat press right here that I'm going to pull in so I could show you some things actually on press. So it makes a little bit more sense than just showing you here on screen. Um, and Mike's in the chat section. So if you have any questions that I'm not able to get I, uh, get to, I see a lot of the chats come in uh, and just kind of push the whole chat up. And so uh, I'll go back digging through if we have some time uh, or if I see something in the moment that I would be able to, uh, to help you out but Mike will be there to provide any links to specific things I'm talking about. If we're talking about different transfer types or samples or different guides on the website uh, that you could download for free, he'll direct you to those. So just keep an eye out in that chat section. If you're watching this on a replay, which yes, all of these webinars are recorded, but if you're watching this on a replay, uh, it doesn't end. It's just not live interactivity. So leave us a comment down in the chat section below uh, and we would be happy to answer your question and keep the conversation going. Uh, we find that there's so many new challenges we learn about or extra solutions that decorators just like you share, and it makes the entire community better as a whole. But without further ado, because we have a ton to get to today, um, and we're going to get kind of in depth on some of these mistakes. Uh, and so you have the tips to avoid them. Uh, so you're not making these mistakes. So you could definitely uh, decorate more efficiently higher quality uh, and really wow your customers, right? So uh, on the agenda here for today, uh, first we're gonna talk about what is heat printing, right? Cause we need a little bit, bit of basic information, a basic foundation once we start into some of the issues that we see and how to avoid them, how to correct them, how to fix them, right? So um, we're gonna talk about the importance of a quality heat press, which it may be more important than you think. And we see a lot of decorators out there starting out with some different equipment um, and how to really kind of scale your business uh, and make things a lot easier to, to decorate, number one, and number two, produce higher quality garments, right? Uh, I'm sure we've all heard of the aversion if you talk to somebody and you're like, oh, I'm going to use heat transfer vinyl or HTV for this, or, you know, oh, is that that cricket stuff, which... HTV has gotten a bad rap in past couple years, right? Heat transfers maybe in general, uh, only because of the flood of low quality and improper application. Heat transfer vinyl and heat transfers have been used for the past almost 100 years for major league sports decorating, right? Uh, and when they're applied properly, they are quality applications and prints that will outlive the garment. So that's going to be some of the stuff that we're going to talk about today. And then we're diving straight into the 10 list, uh, the top 10 of the, the top heat printing mistakes uh, that we see. And we're going to talk about how to avoid them or fix them. So um, we're going to get rolling in. I'm going to check the chat here real quick. I see Mike already uh, 
chiming in. You're going to see them highlighted in red there. Uh, already putting some links in there um, and uh, talking about, yeah, how long this thing is going to go. So, and he's already putting videos in to help help folks out. So uh, that's awesome. Mike in the chat, really appreciated for everything he does here. Um, and yeah, keep your questions flowing. We are here to help. That's exactly what this webinar uh, is for. So kicking us off the bat right away, right? What is heat printing? Uh, heat printing is essentially using a heat press, very similar to this one that I've got right here, right? I've got a little heat press right here. This is the Hoptronics Auto Clam, at least if you see in my little, my little view. We'll definitely make this bigger when we get into it. But it's using uh, uh, essentially heat transfers uh, to print a design onto a substrate, whether it be a t-shirt, a polo like I'm wearing, right? This decoration where it says Transfer Express and the Transfer Express logo uh, on my polo is using a heat transfer. It's really great for being able to decorate on any fabric with just about any finish, right? When we talk about different print methods out in the industry from screen printing or direct to garment uh, or sublimation, sublimation is a heat transfer process. Anyway, uh, embroidery, right? There are heat transfers that you could get that emulate all of those printing methods, but instead of buying $10,000, $20,000, $30,000 pieces of equipment, or when we're even talking about some of those automatic screen printing presses that could be, you know, close to a quarter million or half a million dollars, uh, you need, that's a lot of risk, right, to take on just starting out. And then you're limited to maybe some of uh, some specific fabrics that you could decorate on, say with direct to garment, right? So uh, you're unable to decorate on polyester heavy or polyester shirts, unless you buy a specific printer solely for that. Um, and so a heat press really consolidates all of that allows you to get the screen printed finish, say with a screen printed transfer, or that full color finish with a direct to film or a hybrid transfer, Ultra Color Max or Ultra Color Pro respectively, right? So you're able to really utilize one piece of equipment that's going to allow you to decorate a wide variety of products from t-shirts to backpacks to tote bags to things that you wouldn't even think about putting under an embroidery machine or under a traditional screen printing press, right? So, um, but, it is super versatile um, and incredibly easy to learn. So that's why we see a lot of new decorators into the industry adopting it or small businesses uh, that want to bring production in-house. It's so easy to just put. I have mine just here in my office, right? So you could put it in the corner of an office. I was out at JC Pro Design uh, in Salt Lake City. Great print shop. Justin Leader is a great guy out there, um, but essentially running a very profitable heat press department out of a spare 10 by 10 office, right? Uh, with just a couple of employees, uh, four, five, five, six heat presses all in one room. Of course, air conditioned because it would get very hot. I feel the press just right next to me right here um, heating me up. But it's it's fall. It's autumn, right? So uh, it's just keeping me nice and toasty. It's my little campfire uh, <laughs> next to me. But you can see the profitability of just one uh, essential a piece of equipment, right? You don't need a warehouse to store uh, all of the conveyor dryers or the big carousel presses or anything like that. It is scalable um, and it's low maintenance too. So you're not going to be uh, doing a whole bunch of maintenance on it. It is very common for heat presses to last 10 to 20 years, especially high quality ones that are made with quality components, um, like some of the Hotronics machines that we'll talk about here today. But Basis for heat printing, right? But heat printing relies on three things, and that's time, temperature, and pressure. Uh, you're going to hear us refer to those uh, quite often today. And if you learn anything about heat transfers and heat applied products, time, temperature, and pressure is your bread and butter, right? Uh, it is the key to proper application, to quality prints, and long lasting prints. Uh, here at Transfer Express, uh, nearly all of our transfers are, are independently wash tested to 50 cycles uh, for the lifetime of the garment, which is the industry standard. That's when you'll start to see the apparel itself start to break down, get holes, uh, seams will start to fall out. So 50 cycles is, is what the industry considers the lifespan of a garment. With proper time, temperature, and pressure, you can ensure that whatever graphic you're putting on there, whatever transfer type you're putting on there, uh, that it's going to last that duration of the garment and look absolutely phenomenal, right? I've had this polo. Uh, this is an Ultra Color Max direct to film print on it. I've had this specific polar polo for about a year and a half. Absolutely looks phenomenal. Still stretches and rebounds great. No puckering on that, right? So uh, 
it, they are quality transfers, but you do need to follow the time, temperature, and pressure. I look at them kind of like a tripod, right? So a tripod that holds a camera up has three legs. If you take one of those legs away, it falls over. And the most commonly overlooked, and we could even say this is uh, heat printing mistake number one, is not having accurate pressure, right? And that's kind of where the importance of a quality heat press comes in is with that pressure. Because uh, say if you're just using an iron, right? Or uh, we know that there's the Cricut Easy Press out there that essentially is just a giant iron, right? That's where pressure is at a variable. I might push harder than my friend does or Mike in the chat, right? Uh, Mike's my friend too. So my friend, Mike, will just say my friend, Mike, right? So like, but it's, it's your pressure. So if I'm putting my full body weight on it, that's different than the next person who's printing it. And it's not repeatable uh, time after time. If I have one foot on the ground or maybe uh, I, I have one hand on the table when I'm pressing down, pressing down. So you don't have that accurate pressure, which doesn't matter how accurate your time and temperature are if your pressure is not accurate. And so that's one thing if you're shopping for a heat press to absolutely take into consideration. It takes so much guesswork out of the entire process uh, or trying to figure out exactly what your pressure's at. Look for a press with a digital pressure gauge. So it's going to tell you uh, what you what your pressure is set at. So um, I'm just going to go full screen here real quick. Um, let's see if I could stop this slideshow and pull it on down. And so I come full screen. Here I am. Here is my heat press, right? So uh, this is my heat press, my autoclam. Hey there, focus. What don't know where you went. Uh, this is where our pressure is set. Always look for an over the pressure adjustment knob, right? Because that's going to uh, alleviate some of those pinch points, especially with the lower cost presses. Let's pull it on even closer in the frame here. Oh. Maybe not. I'm going to fight with it. There we go. Um, some of those presses that have the pressure adjustment back here aren't the best, right? Because then that's raising and lowering all of this entire arm. So while it could get that that firm pressure, it's going to pinch at the back of your, uh, your platen before it gives the full pressure here. So your pressure is always going to be higher in the back than it is up front. That's why having an over the center pressure adjustment knob is going to get you that firm, even pressure across the entire surface area. Because if you've ever been like me and printing on a, well, low quality heat press um, that has uh, maybe an uneven platen or the pressure pinches in the back, I have one at home that I don't use anymore. It's stored in the basement um, because it pinches in the back, right? So it's heavy pressure here, but then those prints are under applied near the top of the platen near me, uh, which looks like uh, fading or peeling or cracking, right? Uh, so you want to ensure that the entire transfer is getting the full proper application. Now with our Hotronics Auto Clam that we have here, this is the 16 by 20 version. Um, it's kind of hard to see on screen, but right here we have this little number and you might have saw it just change, uh, but we are right now over pressure. So it turned off because um, I just adjusted our pressure knob here. So let me back it off a little bit and push it on down. And sure enough, there we are right at an eight on our pressure. So we know we have a, uh, a medium firm, probably more on the firmer side. It goes from one to nine. So you'll see that common. And then once this pops up, uh, you'll see that it will go to a one or a zero, right? To tell us that we're at that light pressure. Uh, the rest of our settings are right here on the back of the press, our time and temperature, but that pressure is paramount even just me pushing it down right now, you can see it kind of changing. Um, it went up to a two, but you want to make sure you have that because then that takes the guesswork out of it. Of course, if you have a heat press without uh, the pressure readout, you could take like a piece of paper, right? We call it the dollar bill test or the paper test. You're going to put it right there on the edge of the uh, of the platen. Oh, you can, it's kind of hard to see that one. We'll go with this one, but usually I'll cut them into strips like a dollar bill shape. Uh, we'll push this one down, right? Lock it out. And if we can't pull it out, like where we are, right, I see that we're at an eight still on pressure. So that firm, this is pretty hard and locked in there, right? If we were at a light pressure, it would just pull right out. But depending on what substrate you have here, oh man, I just wiped a whole bunch of ink on my, my nice shirt. Look at that, dirty. <laughs> Don't do it with ink on, uh, on, on paper, right? So you'll be able to gauge that pressure there. But Every single time you change this pressure knob or load on something else, say I just have a regular t-shirt on here now, but say I were to put on a 
uh, a sweatshirt, right? The sweatshirt's thicker now. Now I have to adjust my pressure. And depending on if I have one of these quick slit pad protectors or if you just have the regular foam, right, that's on the bottom of the press, uh, it may grip your dollar bill or your paper more. So there still is some guesswork into it. That's why it's important uh, to have a press that has that pressure readout, our little red number right here. Uh, if you can't see on screen, it looks like it might be a little blurry, uh, but you could see tons of that uh, in detail when we go over these presses on our YouTube channel, uh, if you're interested in that, right? So uh, pressure, absolutely paramount and very, very important to, to getting those proper applications, right? And we see it all the time uh, with, hey, this isn't applying or this, this is peeling off with the carrier and it's not sticking to the garment. Nine times out of 10, it comes down to that pressure or if it's not laundering, right? And so I always like to say um, the best case scenario is it applies great, right? That's best case scenario, applies flawlessly, uh, lasts that full duration, right? But if I'm going to have a failure uh, of anything, right? Whether it be my own equipment, whether it be my own uh, mind overlooking certain settings uh, or you know, barring anything wrong with a transfer, I want it to happen in my shop, right? So the pressure is one where if you have that pressure wrong, nine times out of 10, it's going to apply perfectly fine, right? But it's not going to launder like it should. That's why screen printer transfers require that like kind of medium to firm pressure, right? To really sink the ink down in the fibers of the t-shirt for that long lasting print. Um, because the worst case scenario is that it looks fine to me. I deliver to my customer and then something starts happening with that garment, right? Because nine times out of 10, they're not coming back to you, right? It is a minority of cases where somebody's gonna reach back out to you and go, hey, I had this issue with these, would you be able to fix it? And now you could salvage a customer, you could continue to service that customer in the future, right? Uh, which we wanna do, and we want them to be happy, so we're able to fix it. But the other, the vast majority of the time, they're just walking, right? The next time they need shirts, they're gonna, they're gonna go to somebody else. And that's not how you build a sustainable business, right? You want quality. You want those t-shirts. You want those results that people want to wear and are thrilled because then they're going to come back to you. You could spend less time marketing and you could start decorating more apparel, be generating that profit when you have that, uh, that stable of customers or clients that you're working with, right? You don't have to always be going out and looking for new customers. Um, of course, like I talked about, uh, one piece of equipment is all you need. So when you're really just starting your t-shirt business, starting custom decorating uh, or looking to add those capabilities in house, it's just one machine, right? All the transfers you buy on demand when the order is placed. So you don't necessarily need to be stocking a ton of materials or investing in printers of your own until you build that volume up behind you, right? Uh, and even I've talked to plenty of shops that are in the commercial space that are like, we're not getting into DTF printing. We just don't want to do it in house. We're not scientists. We don't have a chemistry team. We don't have the time to be uh, spot checking and making sure the quality is good coming off the press and the environment and humidity is right. We want to focus on decorating apparel and making our customers happy. This is not something that fits into our business and they buy custom. So from, uh, you know, small businesses at home to large commercial print shops that are still buying custom transfers. Uh, it works for everybody, right? Uh, like I mentioned, heat presses are an investment that's going to last very minimal maintenance. We have a video on our YouTube channel of maintaining your heat press. And in a lot of cases, just a little drips of oil here and there, right? Uh, cleaning it off. There was a little bit of dust on top of my press from uh, t-shirts and stuff. You get a lot of lint that will come off the garments and you want to ensure that that you just keep those out of all the electronics. Uh, you keep any moving parts free of any of that debris and that you keep them oiled up like mine. You might've heard it squeaking a little bit. It's probably time for some oil and that's all you need to do, right? They don't rust with the nonstick coating on the heating element and the Hotronics press that I have here in the studio, like all Hotronics presses, that heating element itself is under warranty for the life of the press. Um, so that's really one benefit to buying a quality press is a lot of cases uh, you will get that, uh, that number one made in the USA quality, but you'll also have the support and the warranties that protect that investment that you're going to make in yourself and your business. Um, but when you're shopping for a heat press, look for one that has that pressure readout. Like we see on screen here, a Fusion, it just has a digital display, right? Uh, the air powered models, if you're uh, looking for that super high volume and really efficient application, the air powered models automatically adjust. 
One thing I do want to be very, very cautious about are the low cost transfer or the low cost heat presses out there that claim to have auto pressure. Uh, if they do not have air pressure, like a compressor and an airline connected to them, they don't necessarily have auto pressure. They have one pressure setting. I'm looking at presses like the Cricut uh, Auto Press, which we have a video out on our YouTube channel and we really wanted to love it. It is the bells and whistles that it has, but the pressure uh, is the most overlooked thing on that press that prohibits it from being a um, something more than kind of a hobby grade machine. Um, only because anything that requires a medium or firm pressure, it's just got, not getting enough pressure to it. Uh, the same with the HTV Ront press. Again, it's a mechanical pressure that you can't adjust. So whether it be light pressure or heavy pressure, it's putting the same amount of pressure, which turns out to be more of like a light pressure. So heat transfer vinyl sublimation, no problem. But when you want to be using those different finishes, the screen print transfers, uh, the, the direct-to-film, the hybrid transfers, and really be decorating uh, like the professional businesses do, you need something with adjustable locking and variable pressure that's going to tell you what pressure setting it's at. That's, that's going to simplify so many issues and simplify a lot of what we're going to talk about when we start covering uh, some of these other mistakes as we go forward. I just realized I didn't have my chat section pulled up. I'm going to go back and click to the chat to make sure um, we don't have anything um, uh, here. So uh, Rose says, uh, you know, we just got a hot tron express in March. My only complaint is that the blue foam handle is already breaking down uh, and I'm the only one who uses it. So uh, I would imagine you have like an auto clam. Uh, those are incredibly easy to replace on those. Uh, and in certain environments, they do change. Uh, when we talk about the foam on heat presses here too, uh, so I'm just going to pull this one back into view. You can see me in my little picture is that I do have this cover over the press because this foam will wear out with shirts sliding on and off just with the friction of it. Um, so having one of these quick slip pad protectors not only speeds up loading the press, so putting the shirt on and off the press, which I'll do right here. Um, I'm just going to lean back. I usually don't do this sitting down, but as you can see, we totally do it sitting down. Um, so we could spin the shirt. We could put the shirt on, slide it on and off, and it's not gripping and fighting or tugging with us along the way uh, with that quick slip pad protector on it. Um, and it also protects the blue foam on the bottom of that press as well. Um, so awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, let's see. Uh, LK says, would the A to Z press be a better option for me than the Kraft one? It's 800 versus 375. And the Kraft is a lot, a lot less weight to take to an event. Uh, that's a fantastic question. The Kraft press is super portable. Love the over the center pressure adjustment on it and its small foot size. But that's its kind of big drawback too, is that it is just a nine by 12. So if you're just doing standard uh, center chest prints, uh, you know, maybe like 11 inches by five or six inches, no problem. But if you're doing any larger prints, uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend the craft press. It's very great to start with uh, and the mechanics of it, the floating platen, the over the center of the pressure adjustment. Absolutely love it. The A to Z is going to get you a little bit more size on that 15 by 15. But I will say uh, a huge upgrade from the A to Z press at that same price range would be the max presses. So they look like the auto clam I have here, uh, but they are black. So those are made by Hotronics in the United States. And... While they don't have the pressure readout, they do have the same functionality of an auto clam and the interchangeable platens that Hotronic sells, which we're going to cover here in just a minute. So uh, I don't want to get too, too far and deep in here um, into it. So yeah, the Max Press is definitely my choice over the A to Z. Um, it just is kind of like the auto clam, but it doesn't auto open. Uh, if you have the budget for it, I always recommend go to the maximum of what your budget can afford. Hotronics presses have great resale value in the industry, uh, and they are absolute workhorses. This one here uh, we use in our studio. It's been in our studio for coming up on six years, I think, right? 2018 uh, is when this press was, was put in the studio. Uh, so it is an absolute workhorse for us. Uh, here in, in the studio. So we use it all the time. Um, and we talk to a lot of decorators who have seen, uh, they still have presses from the 1990s that are still kicking, right? So um, miss that Hotronics Air Swinger. Wow, that was <laughs> a great press. I really, really love it. But the Fusion, the new version definitely has the screen, all the bells and whistles, right? Uh, that one, that old one has like a a payphone like dial pad to put in your, your print settings on it. So um, here with print placement, we're going to start talking about our uh, first issue that we see 
a lot of decorators make. And this is something that I struggled personally with when I first started decorating apparel. I learned how to screen print. So there was 9 million other things on my mind from inks, emulsions, squeegees, um, making sure I had the right sque screen tension, the right ink viscosity, the right off contact, right? All the squeegee angle, squeegee pressure, right? All of this stuff that I was thinking about, that print placement came last and it ruined so many shirts, right? When I'm trying to do a left chest placement or a full front placement, uh, the number one thing that we run into and really have an issue with on these, that at least that I do when, I, when I'm shopping for custom apparel or receiving custom apparel is the belly print, right? So the print down here where we're looking to make a center chest print. Uh, but it's just printed too low. So uh, I don't want to wear that. I don't want graphics uh, solely on my belly. It just doesn't look the best, right? So we call it a belly print here in the business. Um, and I actually did a local thing here uh, for the county that, that Transfer Express is based in. It was like a cultural passport program, really highlighting the different cultures and diversity here um, around the city. And it was awesome, right? I did this great design that incorporated a lighthouse and the shape of Ohio and all the things that make Lake County, Ohio great, right? And uh, it was a passport program. So volunteers at all these different locations where people could go around and experience different uh, small businesses uh, or historical sites that highlight the cultural diversity, right? And it was a great program. It was all cool. We had t-shirts for all the volunteers and we show up on volunteer day and that logo that I designed is on the belly. Do I wear that shirt? No, I don't. It's still in the closet because I designed it and I still think it looks cool. But our goal as apparel decorators and apparel brands is to make apparel that people actually want to wear. So print placement is number one paramount for that, right? So uh, one thing I want to show you, and I'm going to kick back to the full screen mode here and just show you what we show you on screen. And that is this placement ruler, right? Uh, so this placement ruler I have here, it is part of our application kit, which I saw that Mike just put in the chat. And if you're watching on replay, we'll be sure to put a link down in the description below. Um, but essentially this you align to the collar of the shirt. It is denoted for the center and both right and left chest. Uh, let me bring these slides down and we'll go full screen. And I'll show you a little bit of how it works uh, on our heat press. So uh, you might be able to see it a little bit better here. So you get a few little application tips always at the, at the handy um, so that you're able to do it. You can see your center line and we even have kind of access uh, either way to look at how many inches off center you would be. This center line denotes our center um, and these are our left and right chest respectively, right? This is kind of mirrored to me in the webcam, uh, but our left and right chest. So if I was wearing a crew neck t-shirt and I would align this to the, the where the collar would be, right? Uh, the center of my graphic is going to be right here on this center line of this this shirt. Oh, wow. It is actually like right there. It is center. Line. Look at that. Um, and then we're going to align it right to the bottom of this. So uh, with this uh, little chart, little placement guide, I'm going to pull this in. And hopefully you can see this uh, quite well. I have a small space here. Um, so we're just going to do it just like this, right? So I'm going to load my shirt all the way onto the press. I'll make sure it's straight. So I'm just going to grab the armpit on either side here, um, where the sleeve seam meets the body of the garment. If you have a side seam shirt, like I have right here, you could trace the side seams down with just your fingers to make sure it's evenly aligned all the way down your shirt. And I'm confident that this is loaded on there correctly. I always like to go all the way on and then back it off if you want to. Here we could even see the top seams kind of aligned uh, and equal on either side. So loading number one for your perfect placement. Then we're going to take our application ruler, right? Our placement ruler, and we're going to just align it to the crew neck of our shirt here. So I know with say like a center chest print, let me just reach for a transfer right down here. I have a transfer right here. I could just fold this over. This is our Ultra Color Max direct to film transfers. I love it for its low temperature application, no minimum. So you could order just one of these if you want. Uh, and it has the clear carrier for easy alignment. But what I'm doing here is I'm just holding it up to my light to look at the print through it, right? I'm pretty much matching up this uh, little tiger's ear. So you could kind of see it on the other side. So all I do is find that and I'm going to crease the top and crease the bottom of our transfer. We want to try not to crease the ink I did there, but you don't want to do that because it could start to peel off the carrier and not have that great application, right? So now I have a little crease as a guide at the top and the bottom, and I'm going to place this down right centered, right? So that that center that we made on our transfer is now aligned with the center line of our transfer. For the distance down from collar, 
uh, you might have saw on the slide uh, the three finger rule, right? So that's kind of synonymous with any print shop. Uh, three fingers down from the collar is where our graphics going to start because for most graphics, that's a okay. So uh, I'll put my three fingers down, which subsequently is about the width of this ruler itself. Uh, I'm just going to go up a little bit because we have a little bit of space on the top of the carrier before the words start. I'll hold our transfer in place, pull this off, right? move the collar off the platen, and there we go. Our shirt is perfectly placed. That's gonna be a great left or center chest print that's gonna be right on our shirt. Now, if we wanted to use this, right, I'm gonna go all the way back on so I can see my collar line again. Say I'm gonna do something like a left chest print like I'm wearing on this polo right here. We'll go ahead and align it just the same. Make sure that our, our collar is aligned right here in the middle of our ruler. Trace that left chest down, right? And you'll notice that the left chest meets where the seam of the top shoulder of the garment meets that collar seam, right? And that's exactly where that line is going to go down. And then that's exactly where our left chest print is going to be. So this makes it very, very easy to use uh, in place graphics fairly easily, especially when you're just getting started. These are incredibly inexpensive and we have them as part of our application kit as well. So you could get a whole bunch of other stuff that we're going to be talking about today that could really ease the uh, frustration when we're decorating apparel and help speed things up for you. Uh, I, at this point, uh, decorating for 15 years, usually eyeball it, put my fingers and gauge as the, uh, as the height of the graphic allows, uh, and look at other features on the garment from where these seams are. If you're doing a left chest print, right, right here, if I'm holding up that part of the garment where the sleeves meet the side seam, right there, where you see that line kind of down the middle of the shirt, right there on either side, if I'm doing a center chest print, it is not going lower than that, or at least the visual weight of the graphic. If it's just a line of text, right? That's absolutely as low as I'm going to go. Otherwise, it's going to start to go on the belly. When we talk about the way that shirts are constructed, here is where that line is on me, right? From where the bottom of the sleeve meets, meets the garment. So I want that center chest print to be on the chest, right? I don't want it to be on the belly. And that's something that uh, people are going to uh, definitely not come back to you for apparel. And it's okay. I've made tons of those mistakes uh, myself, right? I told you when I was first decorating apparel, man, I was putting the left chest prints like up here uh, or definitely on the belly, or we'll talk about it in a minute, but like in the armpit too. So there's things that you want to avoid. The only caveat to this ruler is that it only works on crew neck shirts. So any of those V-necks, scoop necks, boat necks, um, the polos, right, get a little bit more challenging to decorate on. Although, uh, like this polo that I have, if I buttoned it all the way up, you could still see like where a regular tradition or co traditional collar would be uh, if you ignore these, the, the actual collar of the polo. Um, you'll see where like a, a traditional crew neck collar line would be. So you could still use it on that. Um, but definitely one thing that you want to, uh, you want to avoid uh, in that print placement, right? Another thing, uh, and this kind of starts to come into the left chest tips that we were talking about, but also when we start to talk about placement, we also kind of have to start to consider sizing. So um, I have a great example here of just a t-shirt that I'm going to hold up and hopefully you'll be able to see, but this is standard sizing and placement uh, all on one shirt. And you could kind of see something similar, at least for left chest placements here uh, in some general guidelines, right? You want to avoid, you want to use exactly the technique that I just covered, nail that left chest placement, right? You don't want to be too low and you don't want to be too far over into the armpit. So when we talk about, um, let's go back full screen and I'll, I'll uh, so you can see this shirt a little bit better, right? So we see that we are, that, that graphic there for the left chest is starting just about maybe two and two and a quarter inches down uh, and it's going to be centered based on right here, right? Where our collar meets the garment, draw a line straight down, and we should be centering right on that box. That's gonna ensure that that print stays on the front of the garment and doesn't go into the armpit. Because if this was over here by this seam, it's gonna look weird, right? We want to print apparel that customers are going to love. So uh, this sizing shirt is also included in the application kit, right? It does show you how many inches down. So you could say like just gauge, oh, here's my, my three fingers. But you could see here too that um, just compared, right? Compared to my print, my left chest print that looks real nice, uh, that four inch wide graphic, four and a half inches wide would be gigantic if it was a square on me, right? 
So that's where pl placement and sizing start to go hand in hand. Yes, if it's just one line of text, not too bad. If it becomes a full circle or a rectangular or a, a square graphic like this, it's going to look almost comically large. A mistake that I have made doing left chest. Uh, the design was a circular one. I was like, oh, four and a half inches, no problem. And it was giant, right? Uh, so definitely for something like that, go down to three and a half inches and it looks great. So, uh, but this, this really comes in handy for managing customer expectations when they're like, I want it huge, right? I want it full size. And you're like, well, this is what 11 inches is going to look like, right? And you could take out a ruler and measure all of this if you wanted to. And that's exactly 11 inches. So you see just how close it gets to the seam on each side. So you could show customers, hey, this is quite a large print, right? And we have 11 by 14 uh, all the way down. And of course, this is just how it comes. So if you want to add your own placements, maybe a large, right? Get a DTF sheet. Uh, and show that full 15 by 20 inch print area that you typically have on the front of a shirt. Our DTF even goes up to 22 by 22 inches, which will go past uh, both the sleeve seams here, as well as pretty much down to the bottom of the garment. So that huge full front, if you would like to do that. Uh, but you could add your own placements too. If you wanna add placements on the back, the inside tag or print on the sleeves to show that sizing and placement to your customer helps sell a little bit more apparel or just be that reference for placing graphics and garments uh, when you're at the press, right? Because we're trying to save frustration. We're trying to speed things up and decorate a little bit quicker um, every single time. And as every second counts in the business, uh, that's extra profit back in your pocket or allows you to pay yourself accordingly, right? We're going to talk about pricing here coming up, uh, but it's going to allow you to pay yourself so that you could have that success as a decorator and grow your business. If you're not making money, it's really hard for businesses to grow. So um, yeah, but the those placement rulers really come in handy. The placement t-shirt, an absolute phenomenal reference uh, for being able to uh, to decorate those, those placements. Now, uh, print placement, as we talk about it, uh, I showed you the Ultra Color Max transfer right, right here behind me. Our Ultra Color Max is on a clear carrier, um, and we did cut this out from a roll, so it makes it real easy to see where we're placing. Uh, our goof proof transfers do come on a paper carrier uh, gang sheet that you have to cut out, or with the brand new sim single image program from Transfer Express, uh, they come centered on one sheet of paper. So very similar to how we just saw with using that placement ruler, I would just turn the paper up and be able to see where the ink starts. And you could hold it up to the light and still fold it and crease it the same way. So you could see that center line in it. And our goof proof transfers even have a grid line on the back uh, that you could use uh, to make sure it's like not like crooked. Um, those grid lines are pre-printed on the paper before we print the transfer on it. So uh, they're not exactly registered to the grid line, uh, but they do help when you see like a little bit of a skew to it as well. Or if you're like me and just rushing, cutting out transfers, you're not cutting them straight. Uh, so I use that grid line to still kind of help me keep them straight. But the new single image comes pre-cut, perfectly centered on the sheet. So you just place and go. It makes it really, really easy to decorate apparel um, and incredibly profitable. Uh, I know minimum quantities on those single images start at just 50 quantity, but it's about the same price for 50 of them versus just one sheet uh, of a gang sheet. Now, gang sheets, if you're doing multiple colors uh, or if you have like a non-vector file, like a JPEG or a PNG, um, definitely throw it into those gang sheets. We'll talk about gang sheets here more here in just a uh, just a little bit too. So, but those new single image goof proof transfers, I absolutely love them. Goofproof is my favorite transfer that we offer here at Transfer Express because it looks, feels, washes, and wears like a screen print. And coming from the screen printing world myself, the first time I peeled one of those transfers, thought my entire life was a lie because I was doing it the hard way for 13, 14 years uh, before I learned the easy way, right? So uh, I could have dealt with all those issues of print placement right up front and been my only concern versus all of those other things that come with screen printing, including that, you know, set up and tear down. And then it's not really worth it to do minimal quantities. But with direct-to-film transfers now in a heat press, one shirt or 100, it doesn't matter. It's all the same, nice and easy to be able to, to, uh, to get those done. Now, another thing that we're going to talk about the next uh, issue is going to be the wrong color choice, right? Tone-on-tone uh, -tone printing, like so like I was printing a slight off gray or off black on this black shirt, right? Uh, 
it is very popular, still is, but uh, just even a couple years ago, it comes in these waves of like really, really popular and really trending. And then it kind of subsides a little bit and it's always going to come back. But when doing tone on tone printing, it's imperative that I am not gauging light from a computer, right? Because when we look on a monitor screen, the color is always going to differ from what it does in real life. So here I have the color selector swatch book. This is all 70 plus standard ink colors that we have for our screen printed and digital ink transfers um, here at Transfer Express. Of course, with the digital transfers, you could get far outside of these colors. And even with the screen printed transfers too, right? I will we'll custom Pantone match any color. These are just our standard ink colors. But I will say that like, say I'm doing that tone on tone and I wanna make sure that uh, the right black is gonna stand off or I wanna do like a metallic silver. I'm trying to find the blacks. Okay, so this is our page here of all of our black inks uh, that I could hold it up to me and see what's gonna have that contrast. Like the uh, metallic graphite kinda, you see it reflected in the light there, but that metallic graphite where it's just slightly off of the black, where this black is going to look almost identical to the shirt color, right? But if you're trying to get close to, say, a customer's red or yellow, right? I'll use the McDonald's 123. and It's Pantone 123. It's yellow, right? Um, it is almost identical to either this maize or gold, right? But you would be able to pull that up, uh, hold it up to your customer or have them pick the color, the cus the the colors out specifically uh, with this color selector swatch book. So this is again, the 70 standard ink colors. Um, if you have a Pantone book, right? Pantone books are like $200 because they're all the real swatches and drawdowns of real ink. This is actual screen printed transfer that is printed on a Pellon fabric, right? So you see what it looks like, even including all of these neons, ooh, right? But you want to ensure that you're selling your customer the color that they're going to like, because color is one thing you are at the end of the process printed to a shirt when you realize it's the wrong color, where something like this color selector swatch book is going to help you identify those issues up front so you don't run into those issues on the back end when you already uh, you should be delivering the shirts, right? And now, oh man, I'm going to have to reorder this. We're going to have to delay this order, right? Frustration that's going to impact you, your profitability, and also your customer's happiness. So uh, definitely uh, keep in mind any color will always differ from screen to uh, the actual printed sample itself. To avoid any surprises, even when you're ordering digital transfers, CMYK artwork will not shift, right? So you might see some really bright colors uh, on your monitor, which light coming to our eyes, we're going to get sciency here, right? Light coming into our eyes is perceived differently than light reflecting off of a page, right? Uh, because we have ink on a page and we see light as human beings, but we could replicate much more on screens than what we could actually print with any print method, right? Uh, so it, we call it a color gamut. So our screens, we see red, green, blue are the primary colors. On paper, right? We all went to elementary school in art class in high, high school, right? So it's CMYK is what we print with, right? But it is that same, that red, uh, blue, and yellow, but it's cyan, magenta, yellow, and K for key or black, right? So those are the four colors that we're printing for CMYK. Uh, and that's going to ensure the color mode that you see on screen uh, will not shift drastically unless your monitor is way off color calibration, which different monitor makes that we could get in, we could talk for an hour and a half on just color theory. I think we did an RGB versus CMYK breakdown uh, over on our YouTube channel. If you want some extended learning uh, on the differences in those color spaces and some of the variables that you'll see going from screen to a actual printed product, right? Um, so color choice is a huge aspect. Now, when I talked about placement, we talked about print size a little bit, right? Uh, and that sizing shirt that we saw that I dropped down here, whoop, almost, fell, almost fell out of my chair reaching for this thing. Um, so we see this, you know, sizing. So we could see the general sizing because like, say you want to do that left chest or, the, you know, that left chest print uh, and you're too big or too small or two inches, it's going to be super tiny, right? So being able to bring your customer's ideas to life to how they want them replicated uh, is definitely dependent on both the size and placement, right? So uh, we have this image size chart that Mike should be able to throw a link to that you could download. Uh, I also believe a poster is included with our application kit that shows you the standard sizes for adult t-shirts, the maximum that you could go, uh, the left chest or the heart prints, the pocket prints, right? Even if you're printing on legs and sleeves, uh, I will always caution 
that this sizing is a great recommendation, but you are limited by the size of your heat press. So uh, like we were talking about that craft press, right? Nine by 12, that's kind of the max standard that I would feel comfortable selling. Sure, you could press one area and then press the other area, uh, but that's gonna be a lot of time. And when we talk about time, that's eating into our profitability. And our, especially when we look at quantity, it really stifles our capabilities as a decorator if we're doing double the work uh, for every single shirt that we're doing, right? Uh, we have to almost charge double the labor, double the price so that we can ensure that we're making money. So uh, that's just something to keep into consideration. I want you to be successful, right? Uh, that's why I'm here. That's why you're here joining me this afternoon, right? I'm sure you want to be successful too. Um, so I'm here for you, right? We got, we got all, I'm going to the chat here just to see if, uh, if we have any questions. Chris says, uh, where do we go to find this webinar after it's done and go back for reference? You'll see it on the webinars page at transferexpress.com. Or if you subscribe to the YouTube channel, um, we are always here to help. Um, Julia asked, the marketing and application kits are separate. Yes. So uh, the color selector swatch book that we have here um, is included in the marketing kit. It's $20 by itself. It's a lot cheaper than those Pantone books, right? Uh, that designers have that are $200. Do I still have one here? I used to have a Pantone book uh, and I think it got stolen because that's what happens when you carry around a $200 swatch book. Uh, any designer gets their little hands on it and they're they're gone with it, right? They want that color accuracy. <laughs> I'm just kidding. If the designers are listening, uh, you guys are great, okay? You could keep the Pantone book. <laughs> but uh, it is included in the application, or I'm sorry, the marketing kit. Uh, and the application kit is a separate kit uh, that includes some of those, uh, the, the ruler and stuff that we looked at, the t-shirt, uh, and some other things that I still have uh, here for you too. They're great uh, together, especially if you're just getting started out. The marketing kit is uh, your marketing department in a box, right? Um, so it really helps you go out and position and sell custom apparel, empowers you as a decorator to have a traveling showroom of samples that you could show a customer. Um, that kind of helps them get to that purchase decision, right? Because in custom decorating, when you're trying to pitch customers, they have an idea, they're trusting us to bring it to life. So anything as decorators that we could do to increase that trust by asking questions or showing off samples is going to help them give you money, right? Um, because they have to trust you that you're going to take their idea and bring it to life. Uh, and it's, you know, that's, that's our mission as apparel decorators. And so uh, all of the stuff in the marketing kit from the digital assets that help you immediately start marketing on Instagram or TikTok um, and showcasing capabilities to the idea book. Uh, that's a completely another webinar though. And, uh, and I don't want to take all your Halloween and your, uh, your time here today. Right. So um, we're going to, we're going to roll, roll, keep rolling right on. Uh, but that image size, I saw that Mike put in the chat. If you're watching the replay, we'll try to put that image size chart uh, down as a link in the description so you could still use it as a resource here. Um, now, image size, when we are talking about image sizing, always verify before you're ordering. In the Easy View Online Designer at TransferExpress.com, you will always see your width and your height over in the left-hand side. And you'll notice in the industry when a lot of people specify, uh, it's always width first, right? So when I say like, oh, if you're gonna be printing a standard 11 inches on a center chest, I'm talking about 11 inches wide, right? And we'll let the graphic scale proportionately, however tall or short it is at 11 inches wide. So that's why you'll see width come up beforehand. Now you could always just grab the corners of the little dotted line in easy view and scale it around. Uh, but in that edit menu, it's going to tell you your exact dimension. So if you want it 11 inches for that full chest, or you want it uh, four inches for your left chest, you just type it in there and it resizes and updates in real time. Uh, you'll also see the dotted line for gang sheets because we're going to talk about gang sheets here in a minute. Uh, so you can see how much more space you have for other artwork on the sheet once you start sizing everything accordingly. So it makes it uh, very, very easy uh, for you in the Easy View Online Designer to accurately order your products. So the two ways to do it, either by dragging it, which it's still going to update in real time, um, and or just typing in the sizing right there. I'm just going to jump over to Easy View real quick. Um, and show you exactly what we're talking about here. So uh, easy view online designer, transferexpress.com, how you get here from Transfer Express. Uh, this is what Transfer Express looks like. You could click easy view online designer right here at the top of the page, or we could click order transfers, or we could go order transfers and go down in this menu and click online designer. I'm just gonna click the green button right here at the top. It's gonna drop us right into the easy view online designer. I'm gonna add a layout that's in here. So let's just grab this fall festival one, right? 
And we see that this is sized already to 11.05 inches wide. If I wanted to size this to the four inches, there you go, size to four inches. This dotted line here denotes our entire sheet size. We have our transfer type screen print, our goof proof transfer selected, and with all of our different sheet sizes, we have our gang sheet at our standard size, our jumbo gang sheet at the larger 12 and a half by 17 and a half, and then of course our two single image options. So these are that single image program where the minimum quantity is 50 for single color prints, but it's going to save you a ton of print cost when you're ordering them. We're going to stay on our gang sheet right here, and you can see that like I could just copy and paste. I just hit Control C, Control V. Uh, we're copying and pasting here. And just we could fill up the entire gang sheet or I could easily just go in here uh, 12 inches wide. Right. And it's going to resize everything all in real time. And now whatever I fit on this sheet all ships for the same price as long as they're the same ink color here for our screen print transfers. If you want to order, say, like our DTF transfers, full color, ultra color max DTF transfers. Here's our 12 by 22 sheet size, our 24 by 22. Or if you just want to order it by the image, we're just going to hit single image uh, and price it by the square inch. You could gang sheet this or just upload individual images. But look, we always have our width and our height up here. If we scale this up, it's still going to tell us we just scaled this to 20 inches, right? So keep that in mind all right there in the Easy View Online Designer, right? Um, I'm going to pull our slides back up here and we will keep rolling. Um, but yeah, if you have any tips, tricks of your own, uh, or I went through something too fast, uh, you know, throw a hand up in that chat section um, and uh, we could help you out here. But I love Easy View Online Designer, even coming from a design standpoint, right? So I went to school for graphic design, still paying my student loans for that, that graphic design degree um, in art school. However, I find myself, uh, I still use Illustrator all the time. So I don't want you to think that I'm only using uh, uh, Easy View Online Designer, but I will say, for the majority of work that I'm doing, that's just like what we just saw, right? Or like we see on screen here. I want uh, Compton Bulldogs um, with a bulldog in there. To recreate that in Illustrator is going to take me at best 20, 30 minutes once I find the right artwork, import it in, trace it, yada, 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 right? Find the right fonts, set the, the, the type to be curved. It's going to take me 20, 30 minutes. In Easy View Online Designer, <clears throat> I could find a layout similar to this and edit it to my needs in just a couple minutes, just like what we saw with the fall festival and the pumpkin layout that we were just designing with, right? So uh, it makes it so efficient for whether you are a graphics pro or you can't draw a stig figure, you're still able to create artwork that sells. <clears throat> Had a little tickle in my throat, excuse me. And we are gonna keep on going. So image sizing, uh, very, very important. <clears throat> Next up is choosing the right transfer type. So uh, a lot of folks just getting into the industry now are utilizing direct-to-film or DTF transfers. They are phenomenal, right? I told you I'm wearing one on my shirt right now and have been uh, for the past year and a half, right? Absolutely love direct-to-film, but not all heat transfers are created equal. Uh, so from our screen print transfers or the hybrid transfers uh, or, uh, of course, and, you know, our new AquaTrue transfers, which are a water based screen print, right, for very specialty applications, the Ultra Color Pro or Ultra Color Stretch, right? We have all of these different transfer types here at Transfer Express uh, for the sole reason that not all heat transfers are created equal. Now, the vast majority of heat transfers that I'm using are goof proof, right? The screen printed transfer, the number one uh, that I always go to screen printed look and feel with just a heat press, Ultra Color Max, which is that direct to film transfer, right? The low temperature application, great for those synthetic shirts, um, polyester, even a spandex, right? I think this is 92 polyester, 2% or 8% spandex. So it has stretch to it, right? But all these years, year and a half later, it's still ticking wash after wash after wash, still stretching with the garment, right? Because the most important aspect when we're choosing the right transfer is the fabric type, right? So say I would have put, this is just a white one color print, perfect for goof proof, but because there's spandex in this polo, it's going to stretch too much and we may see some cracking with that goof proof. Goof proof's great and it stretches and rebounds and moves with the fabric and kind of flows with it, right? It feels like a traditional screen print on a shirt, but... It's not designed for spandex. So any Plastisol screen printed ink, as soon as we start tugging on it and get that stretch, it will stretch, 
but it's not made to stretch as far as uh, this spandex is going to allow it to go. You'll see it with synthetic fibers like nylon, right? Where nylon, yeah, sure, it might print to it, but the first time you're going to throw that in the wash or it's going to get wet, that transfer is going to have adhesion issues unless you're using a transfer specifically for nylon. I will say choosing the right product uh, for the most part is uh, screen printed transfers, uh, digital transfers, or even then like Ultra Color Pro with our digital hybrid transfer are definitely the top three for most use. 90% of what you're going to be printing on is probably polyester, uh, cotton, or a mix of the two, a 50-50 blend, a 60-40 polyester cotton blend, right? So cotton, polyester, cotton, poly blends, every single transfer we have here at Transfer Express is designed to work with those materials. Um, some are designed specifically for a synthetic fiber, like elastic prints, right? Um, it is specifically designated for 100% polyester. You'll see that in, when you're selecting a transfer type in uh, the EasyView Online Designer, you'll see a little description of what each transfer is for. Uh, if you're brand new to Transfer Express, just remember goof proof. Ultra Color Max are going to be your go-tos for most of your orders. Uh, Ultra Color Pro for high color count and high quantity. But I know you're like, Dave, this sounds confusing. Super, how do you remember all this stuff? You don't have to. We have something called the what to use when chart, right? So you see the link right here on screen. I'll have Mike link it down in the chat uh, as well so that you could use this free guide uh, to tell you what transfer type to use based on the fabric type you're using, the quantity that you need. So overall, I need 24 shirts for this family reunion total uh, and how many colors are in your design. Now, uh, these lines are mostly drawn based on cost, right? Um, but it is going to save you a lot of frustration at the end of the day and give you the best quality product to deliver to your customers, right? So uh, that's exactly what this is going to do. The way to use this chart is you look at the top, the apparel quantity, uh, say you are printing 24, and then we have the colors in the design going down uh, the, the, the chart here. So we have two colors in our design printing at 24 quantity, Goof proof screen printed transfers, the plastisol screen print transfers are going to be in that orange zone, right? You'll see goof proof listed at the top, but say our fabric type is 100% polyester, then we could shift over to elastoprints, and that's going to be uh, most likely the lowest cost option to decorate that apparel. Uh, I do want to caveat that CAD cut is up in the corner for single color uh, in 12 quantity or less, um, which is great and definitely where we see decorators using heat transfer vinyl if you have a vinyl cutter, right? Ultra Color Max, because it has zero minimums, definitely fills that green area as well if you do not have a vinyl cutter. I know I have a vinyl cutter at home and for those one-offs that I need like right now um, in simple artwork, 100% of the time, I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that, right? Um, and apply it with heat transfer vinyl. However, once we start to introduce more colors, right? Say it's a full color photograph and I need just one of them. That's when Ultra Color Max is really going to come in. Or it's a very fine, uh, something like this, right? With small, fine text, a lot of little elements. It's going to be hard to weed that out. I'm going with Ultra Color Max, right? Uh, which is why we have this one here. I could print one of these shirts at a very, very low cost, regardless of how many colors are in the design uh, and because I'm printing on spandex. Now, see, like you see uh, nylon there for the for the, the one and six using Gorilla Grip from stalls is going to be the heat transfer vinyl that you want to use. But Ultra Color Max, goof proof screen printed transfers, you see the two largest areas of the green and orange on here. So, um Let's see. Um, let's keep going, right? So I saw Mike in the chat there. Put that link in there. So download this PDF. Uh, it is 100% free, and it's just going to help you remember all of the, you know, the scenarios of when you would use what product for what um, when you're when you're talking to your customers or pricing out orders. Um, now this one we kind of touched on in the pre-show, right? When we're talking about time, temperature, and pressure. Um, and mistake number five that we see is not following the application instructions. I liken this to baking a cake, right? If you're going to buy a cake mix, you're going to follow the instructions and the recipe on the back of the box. The instructions that come with the transfer type that you're using are the recipe. Not all heat transfers are created equal. And while some do apply at the same temperatures, times, and pressures, you want to ensure that you are using the correct time, temperature, pressure for that consistent quality 
application for what the ink or adhesives are used for. This is where you could start to have uh, the peeling or it's not sticking to the shirt or it's stuck to the shirt, but after one wash, it doesn't look that great, right? Go back and ensure that you are adhering to these application instructions. Um, this has the tested formula. So what we apply it to before we send it out to be independently wash tested is what these settings are. So we have our entire research and development team, our entire product development, uh, and we spot check things as well. You might notice if you've ordered from Transfer Express before, there will be an applied, uh, it's like usually just a cutout of a t-shirt, but we'll press it to ensure that it is working properly uh, before we ship the transfers to you. We know we know that you're on a tight timeline. Well, maybe you are, but your customers are probably on a tighter timeline. Like they come to you on Wednesday, hey, we need these shirts by Saturday. Could you make it happen, right? And one of the bonuses, bonuses of Transfer Express is that turn times start as quick as the same day that you order, right? So the same day that you order, say Ultra Color Max, before and before production cutoff, it's leaving that afternoon here from a facility and on its way to you. So you could get orders very, very quickly. However, we wanna ensure that you're receiving a transfer that's going to work for you. So uh, it does also include uh, some tips specific to the transfers, right? Um, like here for Goofproof, we say, don't use a cover sheet. For Ultra Color Pro, it says, hey, please store in the Ziploc bag that we gave you because we wanna keep moisture away from the adhesives, away from the ink, and there'll be like a little silica gel pack I call them the snack packs, right? Because they say, don't eat, don't eat those, okay? But they essentially pull the moisture out of the air in those packs. So leave that silica gel pack in there and zip the bag back up for maximum shelf life of those transfers, right? So uh, all that stuff comes into play. Read the instructions, right? Um, one thing too that you'll see um, to test your heat press, and I saw somebody ask saying like, hey, my, my I think my heat press is too hot or too, uh, too cold, right? Um, there are heat press test strips that you could use. So these each are just little tiny heat press test strips. Um, they're essentially stickers, but if you see them, um, let me go full screen so you could actually see them. Um, but with these heat press test strips, they have these little boxes, right? I don't know if they'll focus. Are they gonna focus there? Maybe, there we go. We got a little bit of a focus. So you see all these boxes, they have corresponding temperatures next to them, right? So the boxes will color in black when it hits that temperature. So uh, these are great because you peel one of these little stickers off, you put it on a piece of paper, put it on your heat press, close the heat press, and these feel exactly what your transfer is going to feel. So if it says, I need 290 degrees to apply, you can put these on there, make sure it's getting 290 degrees. It needs 365 degrees to apply, put this on your heat press, and you can ensure that your transfers are feeling 350 degrees. Now, of course, you can use one of these guys, right? So these are just the little thermometers, laser thermometers. I don't know if you can see the laser pointer show up. There it is, right on the back end. And I can tell you that my office is currently at 78 degrees, right? The heat press here, I'm just gonna point at the heat press, right? Set to 290 degrees and it's showing me it's at 281. I'm not too concerned about that right now because these use IR light to reflect back into the sensor right there uh, and read the temperature. We have a non-stick coating right there that is reflecting the light, not directly back at me. So you, these are never going to be spot on accurate when you are gauging the temperature of a heat press, right? Now, if you're just looking for cold spots, right? And you wanna ensure like, if I was down here at the edge of the platen uh, and it's reading at like 250 degrees and right here in the middle, it's reading at that 280 degrees, right? I know that that's cold down there, right? But I could move around the entire platen area here and uh, what, I'm getting a variance from 280 degrees down to 279 degrees, right? So it's, it's varying in just a, a few different degrees as we go around our press. I'm not seeing anything out of ordinary. Uh, oh, right there on the edge, I hit 275, right? But you could see that we are within a 10 to 20 degree cut tolerance. And that's what this is going to get you. If you wanna be super, super accurate, you have to buy one of the probe thermometers, right? So it's just like a little bulb on the end of a, a stick and you could touch around. Those are like 200 bucks to start. These are included, number one in the application kit. So you could get a few of these to test your, your heat press accurately. Um, and they're great to just have on hand uh, when you're trying to troubleshoot any issues like, uh, oh man, this isn't applying or, 
this doesn't feel right. Or this heat press feels way hot uh, compared to how my hands usually feel on it. And maybe you're sunburned. I don't know. Maybe your heat press is too hot. These are going to help you gauge that. Um, and I think these, the whole pack of them is about like 25 bucks or something. Uh, but we do include a little pack of them in the, uh, in the application kit as well. So uh, really a lot of things that could help you solve these problems. We put all together in a kit and that's why we put that kit together. Um, and it's essentially, like we said, 20 bucks for those strips uh, and that t-shirt, right? Um, that entire application kit, I want to say is like 35 bucks. So it's not, um, it's pretty much the, the cost of what you get in it. Um, no markup whatsoever if you bought it together or you bought everything separate uh, over on Amazon.com. <clears throat> when we talk about that accurate application, I do want to talk about blocking the heat because we see cover sheets come up more and more often um, on a lot of different transfer types. Some transfer types will call and say, apply this with a cover sheet. Uh, heat transfer vinyl, those PET carriers that it comes on, um, different adhesives, right? You want to be protecting your investment of a heat press by using a cover sheet. But upper platen covers and cover sheets could block upwards of 30 to 40 degrees in some cases of heat from reaching your transfer, which then you're going to have to compensate the time so it could push through or you're upping the temperature of your heat press. Now those heat press test strips, if you do really want one of these covers on your heat press, those heat press test strips are gonna tell you how far off your heat press is so you could compensate accordingly. But just be cautious, at 360 degrees, it may be blocking more heat or less heat than when it's at 290 degrees. And I don't know that for certain because I don't know what specific cover you have on your press, whether it's a silicone sheet, whether it's a Teflon sheet, whether it's just a reusable um, <clears throat> craft paper or whatnot, right? Um, if there is a cover sheet, it's going to specify on those application instructions that we just looked at, right? Um, and we actually recommend using paper cover sheets <clears throat> because they don't block any heat, right? Uh, it's the, very similar to what the uh, actual carrier of the transfer, like GoofProof, is made from. So it's made for the heat to pass through it while still protecting your press. Um, and you'll really use those when, say, I are, like, I'm putting something on the right chest here, and I already have a decorated left chest. I definitely want to cover this so it's not touching the bare heat. Um, and so I could apply this. Um, so that's where you'll use it or a cold peel transfer like uh, ultra color stretch, right? You'll use the cover sheet, which we're actually going to give you with those orders too. You'll use the cover sheet to put to break the static. So when the heat press pops up, right, it's not pulling the, the plastic carrier up because we have to wait till it's cool to peel the transfer away. Otherwise, that adhesive isn't isn't setting uh, to the fibers, right? So cover sheets, whole pack of them is also included in the application kit. But uh, we've seen plenty of people have success with the covers on their press, but it's up to you then to ensure the proper application. As you can see, uh, my press right here, I do not have any of these cover sheets on the press, uh, only because I want to be able to switch between different transfer types, whether we are doing the cold, uh, the, the 365 degrees, the 290 degrees. I don't have to test it every single time to know what temperature I'm at. I trust what's on the back of the auto clam and what I have it set to. And so uh, I know it's going to be applied properly, right? Um, so definitely one thing to keep in mind, anything you put between your heating element, where the heat's coming from, and your garment and your transfer is blocking the heat effectively. Um, another thing that I see here, right, um, is the obstructions. Uh, and so uh, printing on, say, the, the shirt like I have right now, I have buttons, I have two layers of fabric here and a collar that's going to affect our pressure. It just will, right? When we're talking about different substrates, if it's a t-shirt uh, and even something as simple as the collar right here, right? And we're talking about something as simple as the collar on our heat press. <clears throat> so just like I have it right here, this collar is going to affect the pressure. Maybe not everywhere, but if I'm printing up right here near this collar, the heat press is definitely pushing more here on the collar than it is right here. Now, this is very prevalent on thicker fabrics, right? When we're looking at stuff like, let's see. I thought I had, I had another, another garment here, but we have a hoodie. And so when we're looking at hoodies, 
we have that pocket, right? We have the kangaroo pocket. This hoodie's upside down now, but we have the kangaroo pocket. Uh, we have sometimes drawstrings, and we also have a hood, right? So as I load this onto our press, let me go full screen on us here too, so you can see us um, and what we're doing. So the hoodie pocket, right? You can see it just right here with the lighting I have that this is double layer of fabric. This is not. If you're printing on the pocket, cool, sure, no problem. Maybe this even thicker seams right here are going to affect our pressure right here in the middle of this pocket. But it's two layers of fabric, so I feel a little bit better about that, right? You're usually not printing on the pocket of a hoodie, but a heat press affords you that opportunity to do so, right? Or if you want to print on the sleeve or even the hood, right? You could print on those. But if I'm printing on that, that center chest area right here, I have two layers of fabric right here at the back of my press that's going to impact the pressure of my application. Not only is it going to impact the pressure of my application, it could damage uh, the, the the pressure here or the, uh, the the pocket, lost the word, but it's going to impact the pocket here right at the bottom. So we're going to have super, super high pressure. I bet that we're probably going to be overloading our pressure. Yep, sure enough. That just disappeared real quick, and I even had to stand up to be able to put enough pressure to close this press. Uh, once this press opens, we're probably going to have a mark on that that hood, right? I need a firm pressure. I know I was set to a six to eight, um, and let's see. Do we have a mark on the pocket? Oh, you betcha, right? A little bit lighter. You could see exactly where that heat press was, right? Which is where isolating the print area is going to guarantee that proper application, because here... That, uh, that pocket got way more pressure than I, than I got right here, right? I even still kind of had the, the hood on this on the, uh, up here as well. So that's affecting the pressure. You want smooth, flat, even printing surface that's free of any obstructions or seams. So one thing that you could use that is very, very inexpensive is something like a mouse pad, right? This is just a blank sublimation mouse pad. Spoiler alert, also included in the application kit, right? But what you're able to do is... We're able to take these and essentially put it inside our garment. Now, this is uh, about, I think they're nine or 10 by nine inches or something. So if I was to do that left chest print, right, I could slide it over here to the left chest area. And now I'm raising the print area. So the area that's getting the heat and the pressure is going to be firm, flat, and even. Now, this is incredibly expensive. The really, really super easy way that we could raise a print area up. Uh, of course, we'll have to compensate our pressure because now we're adding another layer here. So say, I really can't close that. So we're just going to back the pressure off by turning the knob here. It's raising the platen up and away. And now we could close it. We are at an eight on our pressure. So I feel great where we are right there. Actually, I still think we're a little high. Uh, because we're at a smaller reduced size, right? So then once I go in here, I put it back in. We have that nice, firm, flat, even printing surface right here for our left chest print or our full front print. And then when I close the press, bam, right? We have that smooth, even pressure. So I know we're going to get that great application there. Mouse pads are great, but when you're doing high quality quantity or you're decorating a whole bunch, right? So you're decorating a whole bunch and you don't want to be putting that mouse pad in every single time. Of course, you could just slip it under the quick slip pad protector if you have one of those, which makes it really easy because now it's permanently held in place there. It's raising the rest of the print area or even better yet is with Hotronics presses. You saw I just moved this lever right here on the side. These platens lift right on out and you could swap them with any other size. There's tons of different sizes. This is a little eight by 10 platen. So if I'm gonna be doing that left chest area, drop it right back in, lock it down, right? And now we have that isolated print area. So I'm not gonna get burnt reaching around this press in a chair, but we can take it. We're gonna load this one right back on, center our pocket up and go all the way on there. And now look at that. Now I'm only pressing on this smooth, flat, even surface to print on. So uh, investing in a heat press that allows you those interchangeable platens is a great idea as well, because now it's infinitely upgradable uh, with the tag along platen. So you could even do the inside tags at the same time, the leg and sleeve platen, the can cooler platen, even decorating shoes, right? Um, I have shoes over here in my office that were decorated using a heat press and heat applied products uh, with the flex style from stall. So like 
it really unlocks the capabilities of your heat press by purchasing one that does have those upgradable features as well. That's kind of why I talk about the, the max press over the A to Z because of those features just like that, um, where you do get the ability to, to swap out those platen because the A to Z does have one interchangeable platen that you could use, um, but it's not that same quick change system that works on all the Hotronics and max heat presses. So um, make sure that you keep that, that nice, firm, flat, even pressure, because especially when you need a that medium or medium firm pressure, having a smooth, flat, even surface is going to be the only way that you are going to get that absolute perfect transfer every single time, the time, temperature, and yes, say it with me, pressure, right? Um, so uh, I already kind of showed you right here, uh, these uh, quick change platens. So you see the whole mix of them. The one that looks like two little feet is for shoes. Uh, that one in the middle we were just using with the six by or the eight by 10 platen. The one at top is for hat bills. So if you want to do the inside of hats, uh, the 11 by 15 I use for youth, women's garments, uh, as well as uh, hoodies. Works really great for hoodies. I think the 11 by 15 is the best selling platen, right? So you want to ensure that smooth, flat, even printing surface all along the entire way. So um, all of those things that we talked about, the smaller platens, any interchangeable platens, uh, the even the craft press, right? So say you have that craft press uh, still that you use for events, but you have another heat press that's not portable, that nine by 10 is gonna be great for printing on those hoodies. You're gonna be able to isolate that print area so you don't have to worry about any of those seams or obstructions. Uh, the mouse pad and the silicone pad could help too um, by raising print areas just a little bit, uh, or say in like a case of buttons, like making sure the, the buttons don't melt. Uh, I always err for the mouse pad because it's the same exact foam, right? I don't know where I put my mouse pad, but it's the same exact foam that you see traditionally on the heat press itself. It's the whatever closed cell rubber foam. Uh, so you get that same kind of squish to it. You can go out and buy the print perfect pads, which are the exact same foam um, in the exact same height. But when you need something small to just be that like little two by two because you're printing on a sleeve and you want to raise it up over any of the seams around here, right? You, you cut it up to a little bit two by two. And because that mouse pad is $2 to replace, whatever, I'm taking scissors to it and cutting it up, no problem. Whereas those print perfect pads could be 40, 50, $60 or more. And cutting those up, at least to me, feels like I'm cutting into my wallet, you know? So I want to be able to save money, keep my risk low, uh, and keep my profits high, right? So that's kind of the, the beginner recipe for, for success there too. Um, now, of course, you may hear about heat printing pillows. Uh, I usually recommend heat printing pillows for anything medium pressure and below, uh, only because it's great for letting buttons, seams, collars sink down and raise up any other area. But when you're using something that requires a little bit firmer, medium or firmer pressure, you want to be using something that could push back medium or firm pressure. Otherwise, the heat printing pillow kind of squishes just way too much and you're only going to be able to achieve a medium pressure. And if you need to force the ink into the fibers of the shirt, that's kind of what's happening. Science talk again. This is just Dave's science theater. But when you're pushing ink down into the shirt, say with the Plastisol ink, when you're hitting it with the heat and it's heating up, it's actually almost liquefying, right? And then so when it's sitting down into the fibers of the shirt, that's where you're kind of forcing it. If you're not forcing it in there with that medium pressure, the ink just kind of sits on top. And while it looks like it's applied great, it's just not going to launder as well as it should. So um, pillows, Great for HTV or those like lighter pressure ones, especially printing around seams or like on like jackets where it's like you have there's no print area, right? There's seams everywhere. Um, you're able to use these these pillows. However, caution, caution, caution when you are using uh, something similar to the uh, a, a screen printed transfer, right? Or a hybrid transfer. You definitely need a firm pressure to push against it. Now, this mistake. I have seen way too many decorators make and it bites them, right? Um, with any custom product, please provide a mock-up, right? Uh, no, for the sole purpose for you as a decorator, right? We're not even talking about, uh, about customers, not this point, because there's a cut from a design perspective, 
showing somebody their idea brought to life instead of just a design, but like on the garment, right? Being worn, even if you put some context to it, if it's like you just throw a Photoshop, a little football in there or something, right? Photoshop their logo in there. It brings the idea to life. And they're like, I don't care how much it costs. Here's my credit card. I'm ready to order, right? Because you're bringing their idea to life. You're gaining that trust of like that customer sees it exactly how they imagined it. Shut up, take my money, right? But from a decorator standpoint, you must, must, must on custom orders be providing mock-ups to cover your own behind, right? So in any disputes or any liability, I always will provide a mock-up to my customer to say, color's not accurate because you're looking at a, you're looking at pixels on a screen. So colors may vary, but I want you to look at this. Number one, to make sure everything's spelled right, okay? Because I don't want to be responsible for a typo. I will tell you, I make more typos than anybody, right? And if it weren't for spell check, man, uh, my, yeah, I would, I would spend a lot more time writing, right? But typos, proofing, placement, right? Nothing worse than showing your customer this or delivering this and they go, hey, I wanted that on the back. Well, I have 200 shirts that have it printed on the front. I want, thought you wanted it on the front, right? The purpose of the mock-up is I put it in an email Tell them this is the print size, right? And we're going to make it look as accurate as we can, right? There'll be a little variance and a little wiggle room, but we're going to make it as accurate as we can. Here is the color shirt I'm printing on, right? I'll do it for every colorway. So if they have black in their shirt or they, they have six black shirts, six red shirts, I'm showing it on black and I'm showing it on red, right? With that ink color that they picked out. And I'm going to say this graphic, uh, just by eyeballing it to my own eyes, I'm going to say nine and a half by nine and a half inches, right? It's... This is the size, nine and a half inches. I'm going to be putting it on the center chest. Please respond to this email with your approval. Production will not start until you approve this order, right? I do this every single time. There are so many times where, yeah, hey, here, it, it, yeah, I want yellow ink on a black shirt. You print yellow ink on a black shirt. Well, I didn't want yellow ink. I wanted white ink. Having that email chain and their written approval allows you to go back and say, hey, I did send you that approval and this is what we agreed upon. So I produced what we agreed upon. I'm not telling you to go fight your customers, right? But hey, I'm going to work with you. I want you to be happy. So if you want that white ink version, I'm more than happy to do it. I'm even going to do it at my cost or whatever, right? I'll get, I'll split the cost with you, right? So uh, I, I know you need these shirts for this event. I'll get them to you. You're going to have to pay for your original order because I already invested the supplies and material, but let me help you make it right, right? But I would say not even nine times out of 10, 10 times out of 10, any problems that you're going to run into at the end of the order, when you're delivering the order and they go, this isn't what I wanted, you're going to figure out before you do anything. So the proof is like the first step, right? And in a lot of cases, even before somebody pays, I like to do it after somebody pays because, hey, it eases that anxiety of like, I'm about to give you a whole bunch of money for 400 t-shirts. Yes, I understand that. Before I do anything, I'm going to send you a proof so that we could, you, I know you're invested. So I'm not going to go through the process of art and design and proofing something um, for you to literally just turn around and be like, yeah, well, no, I'm not thinking. Right? Nah, I changed my mind, right? We don't want to do that. But whether you're doing it before you take money, which I find it as a sales tool, so it's completely fine to do it before you take any money or afterward, I want to show you just how easy it is to create this in easy view online design. This is a free online tool where you could mock up any artwork, whether you're designing it online or uploading your customer's artwork, you could easily put mo things mocked up. Best case scenario is you get to use the exact apparel because that's something too, right? I want it on this t-shirt and you're like, cool. And they want some weird maroon color. And you're like, okay, cool. I'll color a t-shirt, whatever. I'll find a picture. But then when they go, no, I want that, that next level 3,600. This is the shirt I want. This is the specific shirt I want. They don't make it in that color. Easy View has real apparel items in there with all of the available colorways, right? So you're able to actually see what color and the variances of like, oh, well, the Gildan maroon t-shirt is a little bit darker than say that next level or that Bella Canvas maroon t-shirt. Which one do you want to use, right? You could show them those different options and it takes you seconds, which is really why uh, it's great to be able to, to use this, right? Um, so I'm going to go over to our EasyView Online Designer again. We could use this same session. 
Um, let me pull this one back up. So this is our EasyView Online Designer, right where we left off with our fall festival. Say our customer says, I want this on a black shirt with orange ink. Cool. No problem whatsoever. I'm just going to change our apparel color right here at the bottom and black. And I'm going to change our ink color over to orange. So let's just grab a orange right here. Boom. So now we can see that our ink color is set. Our t-shirt color is set right here on the left-hand side. We could click mock-up. And that's going to pull up a few options. Number one, we could take a photo with your phone of an actual apparel item and mock up to that photo. You could also use an entire apparel catalog or just browsing stock. So these are like the generic ones. If they just want it on a black t-shirt, you want it a nice flat print. This watermark, you could update Dave's Tees, right? So it shows your own watermark if you're worried about your customer running away with your artwork, or you could just click that to turn it off. So here, now I could size it to wherever I want on the shirt, or if I wanted to even make it like a left chest, right there, I download this. Just a couple seconds, right? Uh, if I wanted to pull up those apparel items, here is this entire catalog. So um, I think we, what was that first shirt that I pulled up, right? I'm just going to see if this one's in here. Um, this is a district, uh, what? Uh, so we'll just type in district. And it's going to pull up our entire line, right? District, I think it was the 6,001. Oh, no, that's a women's tee. Uh, but you can see all of these district shirts. So district 5,000, or if you have a specific mill number, the Porton Company uh, fan favorite is the PC 450, right? PC 450. I click on it. It's going to pull it up. And it's also going to pull up all of the available colorways that the garment is available in. Cool. Great. I could do this dark gray or where's a black at, right? There's got to be a black in here somewhere. Boom. Right there. I'll size this up to about, yeah, that 10 or 11 inches for that full chest. Um, I will say something. Ru Dave's designer tip of the day to be si accurate on sizing mock-ups take the collar seam to the collar seam and most of these model shots are going to be mediums right so the collar seam to collar seam is about eight inches so if we just want to size this up from about there to there is about eight inches right so if i want to add two more inches one inch two inches farther this is going to be about where a 10 inch design is going to be boom left chest or center chest, sorry, perfect, right? If I want to make it 11 inches, let's just put it up there and add one more inch maybe to it. Whoop, that a little too far. And that's about exactly how 11 inches is going to look on that shirt. Perfect, right? Perfect, perfect, perfect. So uh, say the PC-099, uh, right? Or That's kind of like that comfort colors look. You're going to see that all of these colorways are a lot more pastel. There, this is a garment dyed t-shirt op option. So even like the black, isn't like really, really black. It's kind of more gray. But again, because the models change position that we need to adjust this then. We're kind of right at like a nine or 10 inches. I go right there. And that's going to be a little bit more uh, accurate to that sizing, right? That works the same when we're looking at these flat ones, right? So like eight inches to eight inches that we're right about eight inches there, nine inches, 10 inches, 11 inches, probably about right, right there. And we have it on our front. The one caveat I just want to add real quick, because I know we're already kind of over our time, is these flat mock-ups can be misleading and make prints look smaller than they are. Because realistically, the side of the garment is about right here, right? This side seam is directly centered on the side of my body. And my body, I don't know how many inches wide I am, but I am, uh, I'm, I'm probably, let's just say eight inches deep, <laughs> right? So about four inches in from the seam. So if we're just judging by this, and this is to eight, that's four inches, right? If we're cutting it in half, that means that we have about this much space that's going to be on the side of the body. So the front of the body is going to stop right about here. So this, all this extra fabric does make graphics appear smaller uh, than they are. Uh, Rachel asks, is there any way to do a mock-up on the back of a shirt or sleeve? So the back of the shirt, absolutely. Let's just go back to our PC-099 right here. I'm going to click my, my black. Uh, so when you're selecting these real styles, you'll see default at the top, we have the model back, right? And then on all of these other versions, we also have a flat front and a back front or a flat front and a flat back. Uh, so you have all of these different views. So if you want to do the front and the back, and then just click download, right? And we'll download the back view. If we go back to apparel and click front view, that we could pull this one up. So like this one, you could see that there's this little fold here. So at least it gives it better ap ap representation and it's not that like side seam right to the edge of the garment. So this is a little bit maybe more accurate uh, of what we're going to look like there. 
And then of course you could see all of these different colorways. So uh, this designer and all of the integrated in, uh, supplier catalog um, from, you know, what's that? Let's uh, Bella Canvas 3001, right? Bella Canvas 3001. And we've got it. We've got one of the most popular tees on the market right now. I will say easy view online designer is typically a little bit faster uh, when you're not live streaming. It is a cloud based program. So while you don't need a uh, super powered computer or anything uh, to get started and get designing, and you can see all of these layouts in here from schools uh, to sports and uh, everything in between. Uh, you could go through all of these from bands to uh, dances, even collegiate, right? You have all of this artwork to choose from, uh, all very, very easily editable. So if we just pull this one in right here, this one has some distressing on it, right? So we're going to clear the distressing um, and just tuck this one off to the side because we still have our pumpkin layout. But just as easy as this, clicking and saying transfers, right? All of the text updates in real time. You could add your own artwork. So if you haven't played around in EasyView Online Designer, please do. Oh, look at those little ghosts, right? And editing these colors is just this simple. So this black, we see there's some black stars and stuff in the background. If we want to change that to like a stone, change that to that different color, just like that. Everything updates live in real time. If you don't like something, we could just uh, grab this old design I click delete or the little trash can up there, right? So you can move all of this around, combine and make your own artwork very, very easily, very, very simply, uh, all within just a couple seconds and then mock it up too. So when, uh, you know, art is the most important aspect of designing uh, t-shirts, right? Or printing t-shirts, art's one of the most important aspects and it's figured out for you in Easy View Online Designer. So uh, it's a free tool. You, you, you could use it absolutely free. Um, so... Uh, we're going to be, we're on the home stretch now going into number nine. Uh, I know we've kind of talked about it as we go, but I want to ensure you're making money because that's the first step to being successful, right? Um, so ensure you are always profiting and you're always going to get to people who be like, Hey, I saw an offer for three bucks for, uh, it's $3 a t-shirt and I could get 50 t-shirts with a single color print. Could you do that? If you can, cool. A lot of people it's not worth touching those orders. Uh, the people offering those like super, super discounted sales are buying in tons of inventory that they're stocking in a warehouse, right? Costs a lot of money to maintain that warehouse, but that's how they get that low cost. There is really, it's really hard for small decorators to be able to compete with pricing like that. Not saying that you're not going to have success in your business because you're going to build value in your services in other ways, whether it's quick turnaround, whether it's that free design service, the mock-up, hey, I'm going to do expert suggestions because you're saying, hey, we need uh, shirts for this landscaping company. Hey, have you thought about some dry fit shirts to keep the guys cool when the weather gets hot? No, I didn't think about that. You're solving people's problems, right? That's how you're building value in your services. But it could be as, as, you know, as much as like, oh, you need them in three days? Cool. Because that company offering $3 a t-shirt, guarantee it's going to be three weeks before you get a t-shirt from them, right? Because they're not rushing your order, right? Uh, so there are different ways that you could compete, whether it be small local businesses, right? It is a higher quality product. Hey, I'm going to ensure you get the highest quality product. Oh, you want to put on 100% polyester? Guess what? That deal is only for 100% cotton burlap bags, right? The cheapest t-shirts that you could get. They're barely even t-shirts. So, hey. You're going to open your own clothing brand. I'm not sure that those, you know, the cheapest t-shirts are going to be the best uh, option for you to start your own like retail brand. Let's go with something a little bit higher end so that that $40 that you want to charge for your t-shirt, right? This is your conversation with the customer. You are solving the problems for them. That's how you are building value in your services. And your customer is no longer even thinking about price, right? But what I'll do is I always want to check myself against Custom Inc., right? Custom Ink has a great little online tool, and I always use Custom Ink as the as the example because if you go custom printed T-shirts at at you know on Google, Custom Ink pays for that top spot. So if your customers go custom printed T-shirts in, into Google, they're going to see that result. And if you do an apples apples comparison, uh, in most cases when priced out with screen printed transfers, you are far below what Custom Ink is going to charge, and that's going to allow you that profit margin. Right? I like to talk about profits and overhead and ensuring that you are making money, covering your rent and your electricity and investments into your heat press, uh, investments into software. If you have any subscriptions, that new MacBook that you bought, whatever it may be, right? Factor in all of those costs per hour and make sure you're making money working. Because I did plenty of orders where I was just like, 
Yeah, that's the price you want to pay? Sure. And then at the end of the day, I'm like, wow, that cost me money. Like I I actually spent money out of my own pocket to give them that t-shirt order, right? Which that's not sustainable, right? So uh, the easiest way to look at it is take your cost of the t-shirts, cost of the actual transfer or the decoration on it, just multiply it by 10 times two. So $2 for the shirt, $2 for the print. I am not printing that shirt for less than $8. So $2 print, $2 for the shirt, that's $4. $8 is the lowest cost I'm letting it leave the shop for. Of course, when we get into wholesale and big bulk orders, that gets a little bit lower because you want to be more price competitive. Um, and with a bulk order, you're still making a ton of profit. Um, it's just less per piece, right? But we see this widely kind of debated by different decorators. Find what works for you, but please, the only thing I could ask you right now is ensure you are making money and not losing money on orders. Um, so yes, definitely want to do it. I see Paula in the chat mentioning that Dave did a video on, uh, I think you guys are talking about scorch marks, right? Um, and using the little craft cricket press to kind of feather out the edges. Yes, that's one way to absolutely get rid of it. And the only one, the only way that we found that works to salvage an order, um, but... I like to avoid those anyway. Uh, there's tons of videos that we have on YouTube that go over the arch method, which is uh, how you could kind of diagnose and troubleshoot those very heat sensitive uh, fabrics and fibers, right? Um, kind of talking into that same pricing and maximizing your profits uh, is we see people not optimizing the gang sheet, right? So that gang sheet, that dotted line that we saw at Transfer Express uh, in the Easy View Online Designer, fill it up with shirt tags, um, or two prints, right? So we have this Panthers print for a full uh, center chest. And then we have another Lincoln Panthers that's going on backpacks or bags, maybe youth shirts or another t-shirt design, right? You have all of these capabilities to be able to use uh, so much, right? Uh, whether it be uh, those inside tags or prints for another customer. If it's all white ink, charge the customer and all of that extra profit goes back into your pocket. But almost every transfer type we have at Transfer Express is sold by gang sheet. Goofproof, Elastaprints, the glow in the dark screen printed transfers, the puff ink transfers are all on a gang sheet. Ultra Color Max is available individually or on a gang sheet. Ultra Color Pro is on a gang sheet. Ultra Color Stretch is on a gang sheet. And AquaTrue is also on a gang sheet. But like I mentioned, that's a lot of different transfer types, all for different reasons, right? Goofproof is going to be your standard. Elastoprints is going to be for 100% polyester. Glow in the dark is going to be for when you want to glow in the dark, right? Puff is when you want that raised dimension. Ultra Color Pro uh, is going to be when you have that high quantity of full color artwork. Ultra Color Max is going to be any quantity of full color artwork. Ultra Color Stretch is going to be nylon, spandex, rayon, uh, lycra, right? And AquaTrue is going to be the screen printed option uh, to even be able to print on uh, the nylon and the spandex and stuff like that. So it has that great stretch and rebound, especially when we're talking about like wrestling singlets or stuff that like really, really stretches. That's what you'll be using AquaTrue for. But it's going to be a, a minority of your orders, right? The main that you need to think about are the Goof Proof, Ultra Color Max, and Ultra Color Pro. So just some examples of what our gang sheets look like, right? Um Here's shirt tags and the front of a shirt, right? So all on the same sheet, we're not paying anything extra for it. I always, when I talk to customers about it, like I sell that for an extra dollar. It doesn't actually cost me anything extra, maybe a, an, an additional print location or with a tag along platen, we're pressing them in the same press, right? So it's not taking me any extra time. It's not taking me any extra cost, but I'm going to add an extra dollar or more of profit every shirt. Hey, you want the retail look? We'll put a, a print on the inside of your shirt. Yeah, man. That's what I want. That's great. It's only a dollar more. Sure thing. And now that dollar is just going into your profit because you're just utilizing the extra space on the gang sheet that you've already charged them for. Um, put those left, right chest prints, right? Along with a back print, uh, those sleeve prints. Saw somebody asking about a sleeve print in there, right? Like be able to put those sleeve prints on there. Even if you want to be decorating hats and headwear, anything like that, those small little prints are so easy to put on there. Uh, your own promotional product stuff, right? Uh, being able to brand on boxes, if we were going to put little kits together, uh, almost all of our transfer types apply to cardboard and paper, no problem, right? Uh, so you could do those on the on the bags, boxes, uh, even if you want to do samples or your own promotional gear and you just want, hey, I want to put more Transfer Express logos uh, because I want to make some more, more t-shirts for myself, right? Or the crew, or I want to give them away at this next farmer's market that we do or whatever, right? Right. Um, 
put it on the extra space on the sheet. It costs you nothing to get those prints. And then you're just paying for the garment to put them on, right? So uh, use all of the space, whether it's for prototyping, whether it's for samples. Uh, in a way, it's free printing. So uh, be sure you're taking advantage of it. And like, just like we're talking all about, all about those extras, we want to wow our customers. And that's exactly what you could do with like, hey, bought 100 shirts. I have a couple extra transfers. Let me just go ahead and, and put your logo on a, a bag or two, right? Let me put a little tiny logo on a koozie, a little can, coozer, can cooler, right? Um, those little extra freebies people love in the box. And it's going to be that extra something that like ensures when they need apparel again, they're coming to you. They're not even considering going onto Google and typing in custom printed t-shirts and finding custom ink. No, they're going to come right back to you. Man, that was cool. Love those koozies. You got any more of those, right? And we see that all the time. I hear those stories of I threw a tote bag in the order for the library because they ordered shirts for an event. So I had an extra tote bag laying around, took an extra transfer, put it on a tote bag. When I delivered it, they're like, wow, tote bags are awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and do a hundred of these, right? And so it even helps you sell more as a decorator. So not only are you getting your name out there, you're wowing your customers, but you're giving yourself more sales potential too. Um, of course, try it on an item that you're not sure about printing on. These like tailgate stadium seats, right? Really easy to print, but you don't want to like pay up front for any cost for one of those experiments. Put it on the gang sheet. It's going to be essentially free coming back your way. Uh, Florence asks how to use that hat bill platen. Is there a video? There sure is. I believe it's on the Stalls TV YouTube channel. I don't know if we've done one here at Transfer Express. So um, yeah, Scott says, I typically use the spare space to create sleeve flags, which is really handy upsell. Yes, absolutely is, especially when they're just like that white or black. Um, if you just need sleeve flags, we do have them in the three color print, red, white, and blue um, that are available for next to nothing, right? Um, so uh, Scott, that's another way to do it. But yeah, great. Thank you. Thank you for sharing because that's exactly it, right? Um, let's see. I just want to go through some of the chat here, make sure we have the questions. Um, done. It looked like Mike was helping out with some scorching issues in there. Uh, Linda talks about the, the mouse pad line that shows after you press. Um, so this might be one here. Um, your pressure is most likely too high um, when you see the mouse pad. So uh, because we are reducing uh, the pressure. So this is the one that we pressed earlier, right? This is a 50-50 cotton poly face. And right about here is where we printed that mouse pad. I don't see any marks to it. Did we even see a mark still on the hood? No, not really. I mean, on the pocket down here, maybe just a slight tinge. Still see a slight line on that, but the uh, the mouse pad mark's not there. So uh, we do have a chart for that. Uh, it is the perfect pressure guide. If you just type in uh, Transfer Express perfect pressure guide, you'll see. But when we reduce the size of our platen, we want to reduce the pressure. Uh, which we have a whole video on that as well uh, to make sure you have that accurate pressure, which the arch method, spoiler alert, start the A in arch for not scorching is accurate pressure. But um, we are all wrapped up today. I do want to share the special that we have for everybody who hung out with us today. Um, the application kit, we are going to knock off the $15 shipping. So it's going to ship in a big box to you. You get that sizing t-shirt that we talked about earlier, right? The sizing t-shirt, you get a mouse pad. Uh, that we use to raise the print area. You get those heat press test strips. You get the application ruler, which is right here still back behind me. Uh, you get all of this for just $35 in a box. You'll even get $10 off your next transfer order. So you're talking 25 bucks now. Those heat press test strips is 20 bucks on its own, right? The application ruler, if you go look for rulers on Amazon, you're going to be paying 7 10 12 15 bucks for one. Um, so really a kit that gears you up for success. Um, available only with the free shipping. And I will say that we are going to go in and manually remove the shipping from your order. So when you go to check out, you will see the shipping in your cart. Don't be alarmed. We will absolutely remove it for you. So when your credit card is actually charged, you will only see $35 plus tax uh, if you don't have a tax ID set up with us. But you will not see uh, a $15 shipping charge. We will ensure that we go in and manually remove it. They don't really let us throw specials on these webinars. Occasionally we'll have the marketing kit special, uh, but this is one kit that like we don't have any, there's no profit on. Um, and so we want to help you out. So we kind of just go guerrilla style on these webinars. And I hope uh, nobody is watching from accounting uh, right now, but we just go in and go in and find your order. Um, so you have to order by tonight at midnight. If you're thinking about picking up one of these kits, um, 
because then we could only grab what we could grab in the morning right when we come in uh, and remove all the shipping on it as a thank you for hanging out on the webinar. Because if you order it after midnight, we're not going to be able to uh, to grab that specific order um, and and remove the shipping. So just ensure if you're if you're thinking about picking one up, all of these tools, I guarantee you will use every single thing in this kit. Hopefully that $10 off coupon uh, on your next order is going to be the first thing, right? Because I know I have $10 sitting in my cart uh, for custom transfers that I just need to order for myself um, right now, right? So you get that $10 off free shipping. So that $15 you'll see is, is going to be removed by the time your credit card is charged. Uh, and if your card is still charged on that invoice, you see in that confirmation email, um, yeah, your, your card was charged, your order has shipped, uh, and you see $15, give us a call, right? Um, but this is only going to be available for those of us uh, live with us right now or those receiving the email uh, immediately following. Um, but we can't let the sale go for a long time because we're kind of just doing it cowboy style, right? We're just going to go in on the back end, remove the shipping because we want you to succeed. We want to help you out. So, um, But we are all set. I'll hang out for just one more minute as we talk about any questions. And I have the last opportunity um, to be able to grab it. Um, I see... Uh, where's the chat's asking for the pressure guide. Leo asks, is there a coupon code? So no coupon code. Um, we're just going to go in and grab all of the application kit orders um, pretty much from here on out uh, to the end of the day, midnight tonight. Uh, and then we're just going to remove the shipping on them before they ship because they're fulfilled uh, right behind the wall right here. So um, we can ensure that you're not going to be charged for shipping only for the folks hanging out on the webinar here with us today. Um, Anne says shipping to Hawaii may be faster than the speedy air delivery, um, but I believe we could still comp that shipping for you too, Anne. So um, don't quote me on that, but I believe we can. I don't hear anybody yelling through the walls and telling me telling me otherwise. Um, but uh, yeah, yeah. Michael says, uh, I'm ready to place that transfer order and want that $10 off, right? Uh, so you'll see that $10 off reflected in your account automatically as soon as your kit ships. So uh, if you are if you order today, your kit will ship tomorrow uh, and you'll see that credit applied to your account. So um, I want to thank everybody for hanging out. Uh, always a pleasure. Um, and everybody here at Transfer Express wants to be a resource here for you. Um, and I see that Mike put the perfect pressure guide in there too. So Thank you, Mike, for uh, throwing those links in just as fast as we were talking about stuff today. But I want to thank you for hanging out. Uh, I hope that you learned something. You're going to take something back to your business uh, that's going to help you print more uh, reliably, more predictably, without frustration, reducing those misprints and really saving you and your customers money. But until next time, I'm Dave. Happy pressing.